Hey, what's up, chicas? How's everybody doing? Welcome back. I hope everyone is doing great today. Today, we're going to be doing a recreation from Not Polish. So, we are going to be using my own nude. And this one is called Peach Buns. You can find it on my new online store. So, the link will be in the description box below. So, for today's case, you guys, because we are going to be doing a true crime story today. And for today's case, it is the case of Jamie Osuna. So he is to be known the real life Joker. And uh, his his story is pretty, pretty ugly, you guys. Well, what he committed. So we're going to talk about him today. And Jamie Osuna was born on March the 7th, 1988. He grew up in Bakersfield, California. His mother, Michelle, gave birth to him when she was only 19 years old and his father was 21, which they were pretty young. And we don't really know much from his father because he wasn't really in the picture. All we know is that his father was a little, not a, not a little, you guys, he was very abusive to his mother. He literally kicked his mother on the stomach when she was about to be full term on her pregnancy so i don't know if this actually caused some type of damage to him and because he has like a little slit on his little ear when he's a baby so this might have caused you know a very bad injury to him uh actually up to now we don't know if that actually caused you know for him to become the way he is right now so i mean his mom didn't really stay with him for too long they actually did divorce and eventually she met somebody else by the name of jeff and she married jeff now at the beginning of their marriage things between jeff and michelle were going pretty good but then for some reason he's you know things started going the wrong way you know things switched to the worst and he was a horrible stepdad to Jamie he started to be very abusive one day they went out fishing and you know they took Jamie with them as a mother would of course and on their way back home Jamie was getting a little you know frustrated tired of the car ride he was getting a little fuzzy you know he's a little kid he's he's uh, he's very little I'm not sure what age he was but um I'm guessing around a year or two, he's still a toddler, and Jeff is getting so annoyed with Jamie's cry that he leaned over to him in the back seat, opened up the door of the moving vehicle, and he literally pushed Jamie out of the car in his car seat you know um he survived he was okay uh because the car seat actually landed upright so like standing up you know what i mean uh so for some dumb reason they never took him to the hospital but later on they found out that this incident did um cause a brain injury on uh, jamie so that was pretty bad so then um jeff and michelle soon started to have children together you know stupid honestly because who would have ever thought that jeff was gonna be a wonderful father but you know they started to have um kids together and which amazingly jeff was a really good father to them like of course it's his kids his own blood so he was a very good father to them uh this made him hate jamie even more even like they would have dinner and Jamie would sit down at the dinner table with them and he would just watch everybody eating except him. Literally, that was like so messed up of him. And once they would finish eating, he would uh, make Jamie sit down literally on the floor and have his dinner on the floor. So that was pretty effed up if you asked me. Um, it... Ugh. I don't know how his mother just put up with all of this, you know. Me as a mother, I would like, I would just be done with it right there and then. Like, no, you ain't gonna be treating my son like like this. But you know, um, another incident was when Jamie spilled his jewels, and for his punishment, Jeff tied him to a tree and whipped him with his belt until Jamie would uh, bleed. Like, literally, he would just beat him with the belt until 
he was bleeding. Thankfully, Michelle did call 911 this time and arrested Jeff. He was charged with a child cruelty and pled guilty. And soon after, Jeff was back home. I really don't understand how this this works, you guys. I really don't understand. It just it just doesn't fit in my head how this works. Like you just beat up a little kid and you're arrested, you go back home and you're back in the house of you know the little kid you know he's right there he he lives with you you know what i mean I, I hope i'm making sense but i don't know it just it's just so confusing to me but anyway jamie at this at to this point you guys like right now um he's asking his mother like why are you guys treating me this way uh just making all these types and kinds of questions about the treatment that he's receiving back at home and if, Right now, Jamie would start to torture animals. He would put the cats or the family pet, cat, dog, whatever they had, in the microwave first for about 15 minutes and watch him getting tortured. And then he would bring him out, put him in the oven, watch him getting tortured. And he loved it. He just loved to see little animals suffer, you guys. He says it was for self-gratification, which... Oh my God, that is so crazy. Moving on to when Jamie is about 12 years old, he moves to his grandparents' house. At 15 years of age, Jamie went to um, Juvie for stabbing a boy, I'm guessing around his same age. And he did spend four years there in Juvie. And Jamie was released on September 14, 2007. And now he was 19 years old. And on December 2008, about a year later, Jamie attended a house party. And that is where he met his future wife, which this story is pretty crazy. But let me just get there. Uh, she was a 37-year-old single mother. And this girl started to dance with a young man. And her nephew, you know, saw this dancing going on and he just didn't like it so jamie steps up to scare the young man literally and he goes to the kitchen grabs a knife and goes over to joelle because that's her name joelle castellano he threatens this young man and he ended up stabbing him the police are called he gets arrested and he goes to jail for violating parole and for assault of course with a deadly weapon so jamie is back in prison and he decides to keep up with joelle and started to write her letters and weird enough she responds so in november 2009 jamie was gonna get released and joelle decides to pick jamie up from prison so by this time jamie's face was full of tattoos with you know with what with, with the one-eyed clown and the the joker smile you know he was full of facial tattoos now so they drove off to a hotel they have a one night together and she actually ended up getting pregnant from him from this one night and she just literally thought that it was just gonna it was just gonna be that one night but no you guys she actually ended up pregnant and whenever Jamie found out that she was pregnant, she wanted to step up as a father and they move in together to raise the baby and become a family. So Joelle and Joelle and Jamie get married in February 2010, soon after Jamie started being mentally and physically abusive to Joelle. Like it wasn't even long enough for her to start getting abused from Jamie and soon was back in prison for domestic abuse. And while he was in prison, Joel did give birth to the baby, to their baby. He is released six months later and jo Joel decides to give him another chance for, you know, for their little family, for their kids. She just wants to have a family for their baby. But now Jamie has been hooked on meth and just made things worse. So a whole lot of incidents happened that Jamie just pushed Joel to her breaking point and just decided to leave him you know and she just thought that was the best thing to do just leave him but after leaving him uh jamie would still harass her like 
he would call her and you know he would he was just being so ugly and nasty to her that once again she decided to call the police on him and he gets arrested one more time and gets sent to prison for violating parole he spent another seven months in prison and released on october 31st 2011 now jamie was harassing joel through the phone after his release so he was not happy about it he was just mad and he kept on harassing her now through the phone and there was times where he would just stand outside her window and like a creep just looking inside the window and staring at her like a freaking weirdo so you know this was just so awkward and again she called the police and it, when the police would arrive Jamie was nowhere to be found. In November 2011, to be exact, November 8th, 2011, Joel receives a call from Jamie. But the weirdest thing that was is that he wasn't threatening, threatening her or anything like that. He just said, and I quote, put the news, bitch. I just killed a woman at the Morocco Hotel. So as soon as she hears this, she calls 911 right away. And literally, police don't take this in consideration. They're just thinking that whatever, this is not true. And there's like, nobody does anything about this. So, you know, it's just freaking crazy how they just decided to whatever this case. And after five days after the phone call was made from, from jo Joel, a call from a worker at the Morocco Hotel found the body of a 37 year old mother of six her name was Yvette Peña and the police arrived at the scene and found out that it had been Jamie Osuna now it, it must have been because of the call you know they put two and two together and they kind of figured out it was him but they figured out it was him you know heaven knows what it was but police go and find Jamie but can't find him anywhere and eventually they find him at his grandmother's house and was arrested for Yvette's um, death, for Yvette's murder. So now after Yvette's autopsy report comes back, it showed that she died from blunt force injuries, sharp, sharp force injuries, and also asphyxia. And also at the crime scene, you guys, police found two knives and a pair of scissors all three weapons were found right there at the crime scene so it must have had a jamie's dna or something you know to for them to actually charge him with this murder so now police are trying to figure out why you know he committed this murder you know what was the reason he was saying that joel was doing this to just set him up and denied all involvement but to police it was just so weird because why would he murder a complete stranger you know what i mean so they soon noticed that yvette looks like joel they have literally they don't look exactly the same but they do resemble each other and when they are questioning uh jamie about it and see if he did it because he looks just like his wife he said no if that were to be the case i would have just killed my wife that's what he answered so at the moment they have enough evidence to charge jamie for the murder of yvette peña and he goes to prison awaiting trial and now jamie has even more tattoos on his face so he says he has no emotion whatsoever so he began to cut himself at a very young age and later on whenever he started getting his tattoos and stuff uh, he just did it to feel some type of emotion even if it just you know even if it was just pain and now during the trial period he began saying he was a satanist and to right now he just wouldn't leave joel alone he would send her letters written in blood like literally i don't even know where he would get blood from but yeah he would write these letters with blood and the letters would also contain satanic symbols and pentagrams and all that crazy stuff he made joel a living hell in and out of prison poor joel i'm like literally i feel so sorry for her but anyway the murder trial uh, wait was about five years, which took a very long time. And every time the family would appear at court, um, Yvette Peña's family, 
Jamie was just so nasty to them. He would laugh. He would smile. He would just wave at them. And, you know, he was just not showing any remorse whatsoever. He was just so, so weird, you know. And on March 27, 2017, was a trial day to start. And three days before his trial, he agrees to an interview and he actually confesses to everything he had committed. To everything. I don't have no sympathy. I'm sadistic. I really don't care. I'll do it and I'll do it again over and over and over. He takes a plea deal that if he would plead guilty, he would avoid the death penalty. So Jamie was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of Yvette Peña. So as we all know, Jamie is a very dangerous man and he has never had a cellmate before. Not even in jail, like he's never had cellmates. And on March of 2019, he was given a cellmate for the very first time. Luis Romero, a 44-year-old man, had just been transferred from another prison and he was going to this prison. He was in prison for secondary second degree murder i'm sorry in a 1992 shooting which ended in one of the victims losing their life romero had served 27 years already and had been transferred prisons as he was coming to the end of his sentence so he was put in the same cell as jamie osuna and supposedly guards were doing frequent checks on Jamie's cell to ensure nothing had been happening or that nothing could go wrong. Unfortunately, one evening on March 9th, 2019, only 24 hours since Luis had been placed with Jamie, Luis Romero was found dead along with Janie Osuna, who was covered in blood. Jamie had murdered Luis and the crime scene was just horrific. Jamie had a razor and managed to make a knife out of it. He cut off Luis's finger, his eyes, his lung. Then he decapitated him and also carved a joker-like smile on his face. And Jamie was found on his cell wearing a freaking necklace, you guys. A necklace made out of his body parts, of Luis's body parts. And on the wall was a message with blood that read, I am the man with a thousand faces. There is a lot of reports of the prison having something to do with it. Uh, because how, you know, how did Jamie get a razor in the first place? Being a very dangerous inmate. And now Jamie has another murder on his hands. So in the case of the murder of Luis Romero, Jamie still hasn't gone to trial. He's actually been deemed mentally incompetent. So he cannot stand trial just yet until he's mentally competent. And heaven knows how long that's gonna take since we know that Yvette's Peña trial took about five years to, to proceed. So, you know, we really don't know when that's gonna happen. So, yeah, you guys, and another disgusting fact about this case, Jamie has requested the photos of the murder of Luis's uh, case, you know, of the murder scene, and I just think this was just so nasty, but the request has been denied. But yeah, like, now I sit down and think about this case because I was doing a lot of research and stuff, and... I was sitting down and my husband was looking at me like, why are you looking, why are you going through those cases, like, if you get this way, but honestly, you guys, like, it is just so weird how, I wish I could just go jump inside their brain and know what they're thinking, because I really want to know, like, what makes them commit, commit these type of crimes you know these type of murders and stuff what makes a murder a murder you know what i mean for example like does it go way back like from all the stuff he went through for example with his father when he got kicked when he was in the womb or you know the things that he went through with the stepdad all that crazy stuff that he went through like, we don't know, you know, because he did have a horrible life living at his mom's house with his stepfather. You know, I told you all that he went through. And as a little kid, like, I am not just justifying what he did, what he committed. But honestly, like, 
how horrible is that honestly even like me as a mother i don't think i would be able to put up with anything like that done to my son i would try to get him as much help as i could like i don't know like i just see it as my mother point of view you know what i mean it's sad but yeah like i wonder what what's going through his head what like what made him do all those murders plus he said that there's two murders that he committed one around him being 13 i think and the other one i'm not too sure but there's supposedly two other murders he committed but he doesn't want to give out names he doesn't want to like let us know who they who it was police say that this might be just for attention that he's just lacking attention and that's what he wants to to give you know he that's all he wants attention so maybe he's making that up but honestly we know what jamie osuna is capable of and honestly right now i wouldn't even doubt him that he committed other murders you know what i mean and or is he really a satanist you know he he was telling everybody on the on the interview that he did that he was a satanist and you know he has all these pentagram tattoos you know he he even wrote a letter you guys to the district attorney he glued the da's photo on the letter okay he like literally glued it on there and he drew a smile on the da's picture which is very similar to what the joker does you know and he actually signed it why so serious so or is he just is you know is it other things that he went through as a kid is he a satanist or is he just inspired by the by the joker you know like i said he has all these tattoos he kind of resembles the joker and stuff you might not even notice it on the pictures you guys but he actually makes like cuts on the smile like joker like on the smile of his tattoo he makes cuts on it to resemble the joker smile even more which is just crazy like you can't really notice it because of the tattoo like it's too dark and stuff but he actually cuts it so that it resembles it more oh my god this is just so crazy honestly you guys um but yeah this is a very interesting story i really want to know what's going to happen to the trial uh for luisa's romero's murder and hopefully i will have an update soon hopefully their family you know has some type of closure even though he's already in jail like there's not much they could do you know what i mean like i don't know like it's just so weird since he's already in jail and stuff so we'll see what happens but yes you guys so this is the story of jamie osuna and i really hope you guys enjoyed it it is a super tragic story horrible story and thank you so much for being here this is the end result of the whole recreation that we just did and i will see you on the next one thank you for being here once again i will see you on the next one stay safe god bless and bye bye